So today we are going to, to complete our overview, let's say on visual design. And we still have, let's say, a lot of material to go through, but we will try to, to focus on the most important things and then leave the, the rest for, if you want, you, you can have a look, but we, we can focus on the most important things. So we, we spoke yesterday about layouts, white space, fonts, etc. And we said that one other thing that's important is actually um, the, the, the layout in terms of grids and alignment within the entire page and colors and navigations. And we also mentioned that typically people on the web, for instance, doesn't read anything, just scan, skim through the pages and get the main information. So it's important to set up the text in the best way possible. So uh, many, all, I would say, the software application have some kind of alignment and use some kind of grid-based system. Um, so, which, are, which is alignment, theoretically alignment are invisible line that run through the interface and then attract the left or right edge of any widget. And this alignment can be in vertical lines or horizontal lines. And, and this is an example where I always, oh, no, I didn't miss the line. So this is an example. So this is an example not from a web application. This is actually uh, an example from PowerPoint, uh, in which the PowerPoint setting, so a desktop application, is set up in, as alignment, uh, in this case vertical lines, in which all the text is aligned and all the contents are aligned and also the checkboxes here are aligned, first level, second level, etc. and all the text areas and the, the drop-down are aligned. So all the user interface has some sort of alignment to indicate order, to indicate consistency, and also to indicate priority. Like if you select this checkbox here, these other checkbox is secondary with respect to the first one, and so it's aligned differently from the other, so to indicate hierarchy between items. And, and this is visible by this alignment. Uh, lines here and you this is another example this is Visual Studio documentation so if you want to develop an extension for Visual Studio then Microsoft give you specific alignment example to develop and create this user interface and say okay every second uh, level um, option should be aligned and labels should be aligned to the text areas and it's also more precise than that. It will tell you that, for instance, the distance between the label and the border is, should be exactly 12 pixels. Not 13, not 14, 12. And the distance between these two buttons, okay, in cancer, should be six, exactly six. So this is the level of guidelines that we have seen a few, a few weeks ago, but still is about alignment and is about grids and uh, in, in a way that is so specific in some kind of uh, application. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, other example, older example, but still is something that exists now, but also existed in 1999. This is uh, the Java look and feel guideline from my Sun Microsystem that was the previous, let's say, maintainer of Java before Oracle uh, brought, brought it. Um, and also in this case, there are alignments. So user interface are since a lot of time built in alignment, uh, with alignment and with grids and with measure. And you see also measure that are sort of similar. So the distance is 12 pixel, and then this distance is 11, and it's also this distance is 11, and this other that is close to the first one is again 12. And so there is repetition, there is consistency uh, as well. Uh, well, you, you have experience grid layout. Um, well, there are a few different definitions, but many of you, if not all, have done web application, either in Italian or in English, and you have used Bootstrap. So Bootstrap has a grid-based system. So it's column, as spaces between column, as breakpoints, 
etc. So the same mechanism that it's used for um, desktop application is also used for the web and is also used for mobile. And there are frameworks that allow you to set these grids. And these grids are not there by chance, but because it's actually used everywhere, as we have seen. Mm. So alignment, grids, is, well, Bootstrap also allow to have responsive. And there are many grid systems. So Bootstrap is one. On the web, these other, other two grid systems. Flexible, responsive, not flexible, not responsive. The underlying idea is that there will be some structure and there will be some need of repetition and consistency between the various elements in the page. And this grid system allow you to have a good fun funding, a good foundation to build application. So in this case, web application, but as we have seen also um, desktop application. And if you pick any website, actually, you can find a grid structure. So in this case, you see this newspaper website has actually three main columns, the, the red, the orange one, and everything within this column is actually aligned. So this picture is perfectly between this line and also this other picture is absolutely between this line. And these three columns are more or less the same and everything in the third and the second column is, so this text here, this text here, and also this column is perfect alignment. And then there are other elements we have seen yesterday when we spoke about proximity, this same page, um, so the Gestalt principle, that also these three hmm, are aligned together and given the other idea because there are uh, lesser important news, for instance, in this page. And so these are in three separate columns. And so this breaks the overall alignment of the page, but within that row, they are still aligned in a good way, in a consistent way. And if we imagine the page go on, we can imagine that there are other three of these picture just behind, just below the other main news about uh, climate change. So there are a mix of columns in the main body. There is consistency again, again in alternating the row types. So one row is big picture and big text. The other row is three small item with picture above the text, etc. alternating. And the title area, it's outside of the grid because the title area is not just uh, related to the body, but also it's related to the entire page. So it has this structure and equilibrium uh, across the page. So again, grid structure, not just in Bootstrap, not just in web application, not just in other web application that you can make, but also if you look at website, existing website, you can find the same grid structure. And also we use this example as well uh, as for Stack Overflow yesterday. And again, there is structure here. These are not very balanced columns, but still we have the navigation that is a column that is a left and a smaller uh, column. And then there's uh, these other three equally width, three columns with the same width. And then we have this center body with the question and answer, etc., etc. But again, there is a structure, there are rows that are repeating and so on. And, and also there is um, our university that has some sort of um, structure and alignment. So this is, uh, well, if you, were you around in 2019 in this university? Yes. So this is uh, what the study plan, the public study plans appear up to 2019 for computer engineer, the software um, area. Um, so it's split in, you know, first year, second year, third year, and there is the semester, and there is the code, and then there is another column with language, and then there is another column with the course name and credits, etc., etc. So it's structured as a table in a, a column, in a, in, in column base, also in this case, grids, row that are repeating. Uh, and then 
even if this is a grid base, we can notice that maybe there are things that uh, are made, are violating this alignment idea, this grid ideas. Can you spot some of these? I think that there are at least two that violate this alignment idea that we, we mentioned. Which are? Is everything aligned? Horizontally and vertically? Or easy to, to find an alignment between things? The what? The first tier? Mm -hmm. This one? Yeah. Is not aligned with what? Is not? Well, from here it seems that maybe that could be maybe one thing, but we need to, to look at with the line. Yes. This one? No, they are aligned, sort of. Well, except these star things here. But cameras, do you think the cameras are aligned? No, okay, so they seem very not aligned, right? And, and how it is to understand who is doing, um, well, you, you probably know, but in that year, who was the teacher of um, formal language and compilers, according to this table? Is it easy to, to get the name from this column and draw a line to visually to the name of the, of the course? Not a lot, right? There are some things, these cameras are totally not aligned, whatever the meaning of the camera is, actually, I don't remember why there is a green, uh, uh, yellow and red camera. This is pre-COVID, so uh, we didn't have the virtual classroom, etc. but some courses recorded uh, classes, like this one, actually, this one is here. Uh, and there's a green camera, so I suppose that the green camera is recording, uh, because we did already and but i don't remember exactly the the meaning of that uh and and indeed this has some issues in alignment and in 2020 and moving forward this is the new version right uh, in which they fix something and now it's even slightly different better in a way uh, for some some problems so you see the cameras cameras now are aligned in a column again whatever is the meaning of the color uh, assigned for all of these icons and they also had another icon with another color but never mind at least they are aligned in a column and when you have two icons they are all aligned etc and it's also easy to get who is the teacher of in that year who is the teacher of formal language or compiler because it's the same line with the same background and these are alternating colors, so it's also easy to read the uh, horizontal alignment. Uh, if you have to pick one problem here, because there is at least one problem here, which will be looking from a visual design perspective? This is the same page in 2020, now it's evolving. Now there is just one icon here instead of this collection of icons. Uh, but except for that column, and they also shift the language and the credits and they added the SSD, probably. Yes, it's, it was written behind the, the SSD, now it's a separate column. But what, they, what can be still improved here from a visual design perspective?
the or. Yeah, because you, you know how to read this, right? You, you know that that's exactly one thing. And it's, the problem is visual because it's about colors. So information system is white and computer architecture in Italian is um, grayscale as a background and then there is the or on the white background again and computer architecture in English is a gray brisk background and data science and database technology white, etc., etc. And you know how to read this or. You know that this or apply to the one immediately uh, on top and on bottom. But if you don't know this, another way to interpret this table is that information system and the Italian version of computer architecture are in or with computer architecture and data science, which are both of them in or with data science in Italian and computer network technology, etc., which are in or because there is no cue in this table that say that this or is applying just to the line below and on top. It's just a or, it's a new line. So you can read this table in two ways. And, and you know that it's one or one because you, you cannot uh, mix, you cannot remove information system to get data science, uh, for instance, or uh, computer architecture in Italian to get uh, software engineering. So they are not in OR, but, but this table can also be read in that way if you don't have the knowledge about the context in which this table is, uh, is happening. Hmm? So this is again a visual design problem. It's, it's, it's a way which we decolored this one. So how can, for instance, this be hypothetically solved? How can we solve this problem with the or? Just from visual design. Colors, which, lines, like a bold line. Yeah, you, you say you, you can create a border uh, between the things that are in or. or. That could be an option, then it should be uh, it should be seen how it's visible, visual appearance, like a border among some of these. Maybe it's too much as a visual um, element because there are already colors, different colors, the color of the icon, etc. So border could be heavy, but that could be one way to group together. Other options, less um, heavy on the visual output. Background. Yes. For instance, so uh, computer architecture and the OR could have the same color as grayscale, as gray background, for instance. And same things for the others. So instead of uh, having a different color just for the OR, that is not a course, so shouldn't be an entire line. That could be another option, less invasive, a little bit clearer because you have grayscale, grayscale, gray, gray, and gray as the ground, or white, white, white as the ground. Hmm? So that could be, and then clearly this collection of icons is, is another kind of, of a mess, but now it's um, sort of solved um, for, um, for the new version that is not this one. They replace it with one icon, I think. Um, okay, so, and this is also another example of something that happened in 2015 and the version that existed in 2019 and next years. So what is this? Amazon something. You, you want to buy something on Amazon and you need to add an address. So this is the version of the form in 2015 and this is the version of the form in 2019. So what you can notice is the same, more or less the same information. Clearly, it's asking for an address. But what you can notice, why they are different. Each label. Mm. And but also, well, yes, here there is less space. Uh, but what was wrong here? Yes, maybe it's not aligned. Uh, but this is also a, a second level header, so maybe it could be a little bit misaligned on, on, on the left because it's, so add another is the title of the page and optional delivery is 
could be maybe it could be more on the on the right, but that could be. This one? Yeah, so it's, it's way different than the others. So it could be, this could be one. And also what is, is very, very close. Uh, but these are, well, and there is a, another button that's missing. But, uh, but they were, you know, a, sort of aligned here, not, not right aligned, not left aligned, but right aligned. That is, well, it was totally normal in 2015. But maybe not not a lot now. Um, so, but wh why do you think they changed? So was, this was improvable, but not terrible. Why do you think they changed in this other version? What happened between 2015 and 2019? It is actually smartphone happened between 2015 and 2019, and a huge usage of smartphone happened. And so what is doing uh, a website that is using, that is seeing less and less visit from desktop computer and more and more visit from a smartphone, well, it adapt the user interface so that it would be not only good for a smartphone, for a limit, for a reduced screen, but also more familiar to the people, so again, familiarity, and that we, we mention often. So it's, you know, on a smartphone, you are more used to see a form like this, with everything aligned, with a label on the top, etc. instead of one like this. Hmm? That was possible, clearly, on a desktop computer. So, in a way, smartphone happened, in a way, they adapted the, the the form to be more visible on smartphone, but also they updated the form to keep the same consistency, to keep the same alignment that other application, other website find, find on any smartphone application. So consistency standards in a way de facto that are moved from one application and the other, and even Amazon just adapted that to, to the new um, look and feel that was also driven by smartphone. But, this is clearly not, not very good. This, this alignment is a little bit weird. This could be, as we said, a little bit on the, on the right, and the spacing is clearly different from here than the other lines. And here is more structured, is more precise. But, but most, the change was mostly driven by, again, a smartphone and not the, from specific. Uh, and also, you know, the style of the button. This is more flat button with respect to this one. Again, adapting to, to a new style that was more and more present. So some best practice in general when you're thinking about text and you're thinking about alignment. So when you, have, when you design a page, a template, something, and you have text on it, it's always good to start from the longest block of text to design. Because once you're accommodated in a good way according to the things we have said about text, for the longest one, you can should be easy to, to move from the shortest text. Uh, when you have a text, the left aligned text is usually in the Western world for the Western language faster to scheme than right aligned text. So this is harder to scheme than their version aligned on the left. Um, alignment guides the eye and reduce clutter. So avoid slight misalignment like this one that is slightly dis disalignment, as we said, it could have been more or less. Um, any patterns or deviation, again, consistency are automatically detected. And so if we want to deviate from a pattern, from a, something that is consistent, we should do it on purpose for getting the attention. And you should use visual proximity, as we said before, yesterday for the Gestalt principle and scale, hierarchy, Mm? for conveying semantic information about the content of the page that we want to, or the template that we want to, to use. And this is about grids and the relationship with, uh, with text. Now, next topic is um, colors. So we surely don't want something like this. 
that seems um, clear. This is, should be an actual website. I hope they, they dismissed that, but when we took the picture, it was there. Um, because color should have a meaning. Color should bring some sense. It's not just, oh, let's use a rainbow of color to, to do things. Um, so colors are a powerful tool to improve the interface by communicating key information, by highlighting key information. And when you have something like this, you have too many information. And you don't know what to watch first, to see first, because there are too many things moving on. Um, and an inappropriate use of color can severely reduce the performance of an interactive system. So, as suggestion as color, similarly to the suggestion we had yesterday about font uh, type, typeface for font, uh, be careful, don't exaggerate. Uh, when you need to design a page, and you are sort of forced here because you start from a paper prototype, uh, that even if you have to, to do it before doing color, designing grayscale first, and then if all the information is visible, is rightly conveyed, from the structure of the page, from the alignment of the page, from the text, etc., then you can add colors. And we will see some examples. Uh, when adding colors, try to preserve the same luminance of the grayscale design. Colors should have a meaning, not just use colors for uh, any kind of reason. Uh, also, be careful, don't not, do not exaggerate, means use a limited and consistent palette and slight variations of like four colors, three colors, and then variate a little bit with that if needed. And most importantly, uh, and we will see some of these things in the next slides, but also try to avoid a simultaneous display of pure and spectrally extreme color, where pure means highly saturated color. So for instance, no blue and red on the same page at the same time. Hmm? Um, and the saturated combination, even of blue and red in a way, so pastel colors are better. And are better because briefly, without entering into many details how, how our eyes work, but basically these are the visible spectrum that we see. And then there is the ultraviolet and the infrared spectrum that we don't see as with our eyes. And with this visible spectrum, our eyes works in this way. That's without going to too many details. So this is the color sensitivity of the eyes. So I don't know if you know, but in our eyes, there are two kinds of different elements. One is called the roads and the other one is called cones. Uh, the roads are the one that allow us to basically see that are sensible to the light sensitivity. So the one that allow us to see something in the dark. So if you go in a room that is dark, you still see something. And also you see some color in a way. You recognize some luminance, different luminance, that something is whiter than other things thanks to the roads. Um, and that are just for sensitivity between in grayscale. They are grayscale. They cannot recognize colors. And then we have cones that are specialized thing, three kind of cones, one for the blue, one for the green, and one for the red. And if we put them with the wavelength of the light, the visible light that we see, we can see that the, the roads start basically from the very beginning of what we can see and stop around here in this kind of red. That means that if we are in a dark room and we have an object that is blue, one that is green and one that is red, at a certain point we can sort of recognize the green and the blue way easier than the red that will appear as dark, as black, because our roads actually stop working at that, at that moment. And roads work when the, lights, the light is low, is low, not much light. And then you see the cones that are sort of separated, especially the blue and the red one. They cross here. So here in this range of color, basically all the cones work together. But see what happens when they work best. They work by the blue cone work best at this level of sensitivity of, of wavelength and the red at this one. Hmm? That means that if we use in a user interface 
too many colors or even red and blue, we are asking our brain and our eyes to do a lot of work because they need to switch from the blue cone and the red cone continuously from one and the others because they are separated. Instead, if you use you know, uh, this level of red and this, this level of yellow, etc., that is more or less here, there are the red cones, the green cones and the rows that are used together and the blue cones are not used, so it's less uh, demanding, physically demanding, sensory demanding for us. So if you just have one element blue and one element red for one second, it doesn't matter, but if you have an entire web application that just uses red and blue, highly saturated, so the very, very pure red and the very, very blue um, color that can create a problem, then can uh, fatigue, create fatigue for our eyes and our brains, etc. Uh, because the vision is actually a highly complex activity, uh, one of the most common sense that we use, and the eyes are just this mechanism to transferring, uh, for receiving the light and transferring and transforming it in electrical signal for our brain. And according how the light reflect an object, uh, we can understand how the object is done and which are the colors, etc. But there are, is a complex activity. This activity we do immediately, but it's still complex because there are many things involved in recognizing forms, colors, etc. And also consider that colors are uh, option A, subjective, or option B, objective um, attribute of an object. Which is the right option? Is subjective. Why subjective? Not for that reason. Even within a person is subjective. Is a property of the material or not? No. <laughs> so let's use this as an example. Which color is this? The main color. Blue. If we turn off the light, it will be the same blue? You will see the same blue? Or you will see a darker blue? Darker blue. But the material is the same. It's not that we are going to change the material. But it's a subjective property because it's dependent from external factor, including lights. So for, even for a single person. So it's not like form or size or weight that are measured in an objective way for any material. That is depending not only, let's say, for the light, but also for attribute of the person. So if you are colorblind, you don't see colors. But the, the element is always the same. It's just you that don't see colors, some colors, because you are colorblind. And if you have some kind of um, color-related uh, disease in the eyes, you will, may see colors different than other people. Hmm? Uh, so personal physical attributes or also the light. Hmm? Because actually, as we said here, the high are just a mechanism for receiving light and transforming. So according to the level of light that we receive, we will see differently. So the same color on a material will look differently in a different light condition. So that is what makes color a subjective property of an object. Because it depends who is the observer and where is observing. It depends on the context, etc. And this is applied to digital world. If you put some color in the user interface and then you change screen, that same color that you selected in an hexadecimal value that will appear differently because the screen has a different way to representing the color. And if you print that page, the printed color will look different from the one on screen because, again, it's subjective. Even if you say, okay, this is uh, hexadecimal core, uh, code AB135A. Even if you specify that, it will be different. And, and there also there are different color models, etc. But that is 
another story. So, but colors are, are still subjective, and so it's something to, to consider. Uh, so, when you use blue cones, blue and red together, highly saturated, you ask extra effort. And looking at this, you can also say that, we can also say that if you use a lot of colors, you will ask an extra effort, because you will need to switch back and forth in these cones, and so the highs should work with different cones, send the signal to the brain, and then back to the eyes, etc., etc., to just move from one color to the other. So that's why inappropriate use of color can severely reduce the performance of an interactive system, because in this case, we are too many elements and too many information to process. And if we use this for one hour, we probably, at a certain point, be sort of tired uh, of using this or something like this. So this is an extreme case, but it's, it's just to really make the point. Okay, so this is why all this, this work. And this is an example of instead the suggestion to use the, um, to design in grayscale first and then add color. So this is the same Stack Overflow page in the original and just transformed in grayscale. And you can see that the main elements that the designers wanted to highlight are still highlighted, even in grayscale. So the button is still a different intensity than the background, and, and this is made on purpose. And then this button is becoming blue, but, and not yellow, but that's because blue has an higher intensity in this case. And this level here, this header here, is different from the other because it's actually an header, so it has a different background. And it's visible in grayscale and it's visible in the color red version, hmm? etc. So this is just to say, independently from the level of color, so the kind of color that is used, in grayscale you still recognize which are the information that they wanted to highlight in one way or another, like what is a button, or that these two have a different background than this one. Hmm? And then they use the color to reflect this. And this is another example uh, in which you see, this is the old uh, website, in which you see actually that, an example, a negative example of that. Hmm? Because here, if you, if you remember, or if you can see here, there are colors, right? So under the university, there is a blue bar. And after, under teaching, there is an um, orange bar, and then red bar, and then purple, and then yellow bar. And if you have a full, uh, if you go here, you can see them clearly. But if you go in grayscale, even if I zoom in, that I can, you lose the difference between the university and teaching, for instance. But these were two different colors. You see that this research, this was red, is actually different. But then also the other two seems similar, identical. If you cannot perceive for any reason colors, you will not see difference between these two. So if you use color to convey some information, you are failing to do it in this case. Because these two colors, are either totally statical, it has no meaning associated, and that could be one, one thing, but if they preserve a meaning, then these are indistinguishable, one from the other, so you lose the meaning. Even if in the colored version you can see that. And, and if you remember this version of, of the website, if you go to teaching, then everything becomes orange, and if you go to the research, then everything becomes sort of red. So this color is preserved in the next page. Hmm? But if you just, again, don't see colors for whatever reason, it's not visible. So you are not conveying information with colors. I'm just there for an aesthetical purpose. And they shouldn't, should not be uh, like this. And then there are positive examples like this that's still visible as a title, as a background of a title, etc. And how you select colors? Well, 
Uh, there are many ways to select colors. The, the most basic one is using this one that's called the color wheel or the hue circle, in which you have the, the hue, so the hue are the, the pure colors without saturation, without luminosity, uh, on a circle. And if you get one as primary color, so the color that is primary in your web page, mm, piece of paper, whatever, uh, you can get a good association by picking the opposite color as complementary color. Mm? So if your primary color is red, for instance, you don't associate the blue, indeed, because it's here, but you associate the green, that is complementary, complementary to the red. And if you pick the yellow, you can associate the purple. And same thing as if you pick the blue, you can uh, associate the orange. And this works for any other of these. So, opponent color, complementary colors go well together. Uh, close color can be used if you need a variation. So, if you need a variation of red for another element that is closely related, you can use it as a variation, but the main color is still, is still red. And if you want, there is, there is a full page that explains how the color wheel is working. And it's actually wheel, so it's missing an H here. Um, another way to handle colors within a website, an application, etc., or any actual physical product is using palettes. So these are the palettes, the official palettes of Politecnico. Politecnico defines some colors that should be used together, that is these three ones. So the, the official colors are blue, orange, and this black. And this is the palette that all the official communication of Politecnico should have. And then if you need variation of this three color, you can have other variation for specific case. But the three main colors are this one. And there is a brand and visual identity document that explains how to use them, when to use them, etc. Also in relation with text, with the logos, etc. And palettes exist, can be created manually, or there could be software that will help you to create palettes. So for instance, this is this colors with double O is a palette generator. You can select a color and it will generate some colors that could be useful for you to be used. So this is, for instance, one palette you can use. So if you are creating an application, a website, and you want to add colors, you can say, okay, you have these five colors that I can use within my application. So maybe this yellow is the background color, and the blue is for buttons, and the, the green one is for something else, and the black is for the text, etc. So it generates palettes for you to be used in combination with colors that are consistent and good to be used together. Uh, this is another website that gives you already done palettes, uh, if you need, created by people, not just created uh, automatically. And also, you can use tools like this Color Safe to understand which is the right level of contrast between a color that is in foreground and a color that is in background. So this colorsafe.co basically uh, allow you to select one color that you want to use as a background color and then play with other colors here to select the foreground color. And it's telling you if the selection, the contrast between the two colors is sufficient enough, is different enough to be uh, used mm, by uh, and seeing in various conditions. Mm. And, and here there is an example from actually Google Chrome that define its own palette within the, the application. So within the browser, they use palettes and contrast. So the primary color on a, on a light background, on a white background, is, the, is black, basically. The secondary is black with a different level of luminosity, and the link are blue, but not any blue, just exactly this blue. And the positive action are this green, the negative, this red, and the warning, this yellow. So it's again, define a few colors specifically and associate a meaning to each color and then use it as uh, for the entire application, for in this case, for the entire web browser. 
Hmm? And also this is the, the version in, uh, on the dark background. And here there is a, a sort of, let's say, negative example uh, of usage of color, um, so which is the, the problem. It's written, but which, which are the problems here with colors? So you, you remember what is this, or you know what is this? So when you had to book something, in this, in this case was a, um, a study room, you use the, this web application from the portale and you can book some places. It's still available for booking places. So which, is, which are the problems with, with this application from a visual perspective, especially for colors? Yes. Yes, so available, so if there is 36 uh, spaces or zero, uh, it's, it's red, mm, it's, uh, sorry, it's blue. Mm? Because there is no intensity, no feel, no different feel. Yes, then. But some things are written actually, but. What else? So this is a calendar with times, hours, like 9, 10, 11, 12. Why the first one is darker than the rest? The first one is between 9 and 10. It's not just, there is a specific, you know, it's the 9, 10 line. So why 9, 10 is more red than 10, 11? There is no reason for that. It was a title, probably, and they like a stronger color, but there is no, no reason to associate this, this meaning to this color. And, and also, if you need a legend with five different colors, that's it's probably a good sign that you are not picking the right colors. Uh, because you need to explain what is this. And then you can, you can move on, like why this is, so the first line is darker than the rest, but why this is lighter than the first line? Again, no, no apparent reason. Uh, what happens between 1 and 2 p.m., who knows, um, etc. And then there are other nice things here, that, but they're not related with colors, and so we can, we can skip it. So, and this is about color. So if you have to, to remember something about colors, not a lot of colors, palettes are better, pay attention to contrast and pick colors that are not high saturated and not extremely separate uh, on, the, on the wavelength, so right, red and blue, uh, because we, it's extra effort and the less color used the better. And if you start to design, start designing grayscale and then add color laughter because you need to be as I said, a meaning of a color, it's not just for aesthetical purpose. Um, so navigation, um, that is still related with visual design. It's, it's, you know, what is navigation? So it's enable people to know where they are and how to proceed to the next step or the next action. And it can consist of various things. It could be a task navigation, it could be a web navigation, or a command menu navigation. These are all lab kinds of of navigation and they are clearly nothing to do with visual elegance, visual appearance. Uh, they're just kind, different kind of navigation type. So the navigation by selection is what happens when you have these kind of things, some menu bar, pop-ups menu, toll bars, in which you have to select something to navigate to some other place. Uh, and then you can have shortcut and gesture for rapid interaction, maybe the swipe left, the swipe right, double click, long press, etc., to uh, help with the, the selection. 
in some cases, also write a button and checkbox can enable navigation. If you select something, the rest of the page will, will change. Uh, so if you say yes, someone does, maybe it appears a question to say, okay, who or what they, uh, what they're smoking or how often they're smoking. If you say no, no one does, then maybe you skip this question because you, it makes no sense to, to ask how often a person is, smoke, is smoking if nobody is doing that. So this is, again, navigation within a page for selection. Um, and then clearly there is navigation as we, we typically intend it as menus, as we said also yesterday. Now on the website, we made menus, the main navigation on the top, on the mobile version, on the button, or uh, closed within an hamburger menu. And navigation is also related to how we organize content. Mm -hmm. So organizing menu is a minimal, in a meaningful structure is not that simple, but if done properly also results in a faster selection and a higher satisfaction. And there are way, different ways to organize um, the, the content. It could be a linear sequence, like next, next, next in a form, in a hierarchical structure, like a tree, like a store that is split into departments. So this is the kitchen, this is, this is the things for the kitchen, this is men clothing, that is women clothing, this is furniture, this is departments. And, or also network structure when choices are more uh, reachable in, in, a, in one way or another. So this is an example of a tree-like content organization, which you have categories, uh, camp and hike, climb, cycle, fitness, run, etc. And within cycle, you have a tree of options, all of them between you know, different kinds of bikes, different kinds of helmets, different kinds of clothing, Etc. 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 And this is a tree because you select the main category, and then after the second level category, you have the third level category, mm -hmm. and you can select that. And then there are other options here, but uh, just focus on the on the tree-like content organization. And if you want to have like this such big menus, you can uh, use Task Semantic to organize menus. So what I'm going to look for, I'm going to look for. Um, so in this case, they decided to select to, to organize them by, let's say, sports or areas like camp, climb, cycle, general fitness, run, paddle, snow, that is not really a sport, travel, and then they lose the categories. But let's say that they focus on, you know, kind, camp, climb, cycle, run, paddle, uh, and then maybe instead of snow, they should have seen like skying uh, and etc. If they wanted to continue with a proper categorization. So, but what, which is the task? So I'm going to this application on this website and I wanted to maybe buy something for a sport. And then if I want to select by sport, then it makes sense that the top menu will be sports. If instead I'm going to uh, create maybe a general shopping, maybe I want to split between uh, men, women, unisex, etc., as kind of uh, children, as kind of categories. So it depends on the task that the person wants to um, complete, the main task that the person wants to complete on the website. And clearly, it should be uh, a limited number of levels. In the example, there was just three levels, the main level, the second level, that is the subcategory, and the final level. Uh, create groups of logically similar items, so level one countries, level two states, level three cities, all logically similar. Uh, if you need to form groups, they should cover all possibilities, so 0 to 9, 10 to 19, etc. Uh, and not use overlapping either groups or categories, so concerts or sports are fine as categories because concert won't happen during sports, typically, and sports what happens at concert, because they are very different kind of things. Instead, entertainment and events can be hugely overlap, because you can have an event that is for entertainment, and you can have entertainment during events. So these are overlapping categories. So 
what you are looking for you're looking under events or you're looking under entertainment is is more difficult to get a clear choice uh, items should be arranged in a natural sequence not alphabetically if happens again link to the task semantic or group together and the ordering of items should be fixed so it's not that in one page there is one natural order and the other page there is a totally different order for the same elements especially uh, And this is an example, again, of not very good uh, organization of content. Um, so it, this is the same tool as before. So what happens here is that I select a study room and then behind this other table appears in which I can select the single study room. And then after I select one of these, the same calendar as before appear. Um, so again, how we can, so this is still navigation within the page because I select study room and another portion of the page appear. So there is an reaction to an action that I do. And I select uh, study room, second floor, and something else appear. So there is a, a correct progression. Uh, what is missing? What should be, can be improved from this? Again, visually not logically. Yes. The final version of the, the page, uh, I cannot uh, see the, uh, the room from which uh, I am opening the, the study. Yes, that is what one problem. There's also happening here. So you select study room, uh, and then we go here. You can select study room, and here appear study rooms. But if you there is, you know, you could have highlighted study room in some way, like bold font for study room to say, okay, this is the one I selected. And then, yes, it's written here that is study room and it's the same text, but you have to pay attention. You have to read everything. And here it's the same thing. It's actually written. Uh, this is the study room, the second floor. That is the first item here, but you have to read all of these and then you have read all of these and it's not even at the beginning of the sentence like here, but it's just move after available uh, slots. Mm -hmm. So it's also a difference again, consistency between the two pages because you always had the beginning of the sentence here instead is moved after. So also here should be, should be alighted. And then if you look at the text here, and I know that is in Italian, but you know, we talked about text yesterday. So do you think that there is, well, this could be written in 11 different, more effective way, but do you think that there is some information that is totally useless for a student booking a study room? There is at least one that is totally useless for you and also for me actually, but for us here, in this text here. The code of the, of the room, TO, C, I, T, 11, whatever. That is the code of the room on the, on the building. So every room has a code, because in case of problem emergencies, also for security reason, uh, every local, every room has a code like that. In Polytechnico, this is in the map, on the official maps of the buildings and is needed for many, many reasons, including security, uh, physical security. Uh, well, not only physical, security as human being, not cyber security. Um, but this is an information if you want to book a study room, it's totally useless as information. You, it's not that you know that that corridor is TOC 11 XP 02001, but even if you know it, you will not remember for the next time. So it's not, uh, uh, are really useful information here. Mm -hmm. And then clearly there are a lot of repetitions. So um, starting from that day is uh, allowed to use the, the following study room. Well, actually is the study room I just selected. So why are you telling me that I can use it? I, I selected it. So if, if I cannot use it, maybe I should be able to select it. Right? And from 15th of July, so this was uh, taken after 18th of September. Okay, but now we are in September. Who cares that from the 15th of July is, is today important, not the past, not three months ago, hmm? etc. And 
mm, the study room was open between 9 and 6, Monday to Friday, uh, and you can enter only between 9 and, and 1 p.m. and 2 p.m., 6 p.m. Why tell me that it's open one more, one more hour if nobody can use it? Just tell me that it's open 9, 1 and 2, 6. There is no reason to tell me, oh, it's also open that hour, but you cannot go there. But it's open. So these are, you know, a, a lot of information that are not really needed. Uh, and also, it's, it's probably quite, it's not a lot of text, but it's text that nobody is going to read with this level of care. So probably many people didn't notice the, the, the room code because nobody actually read that. So, and then, and then it's the same problem as color as before that we, we mentioned. Uh, instead, when we speak about grouping for navigation for menus, this is a good example actually of grouping uh, under many perspectives. So this is grouping for phones. We are used to, to see that. And they are grouped in, uh, in some way Templates, in this case, uh, frequently use templates and old fonts, but you can also use other uh, groups. And within this menu are also ordered alphabetically. And they also have a very nice feature, that is that there is preview. So if you want to know how a font appears, you don't have to use it. You can see it immediately. So if you want to use the... Apple casual, you already know how it appears. And if you don't like the style, you just don't select it. You don't have to try all of them before understanding, oh, this is the one that like it, because you have a preview. And this is something that uh, wasn't always like that. So let's say probably 30 years ago, if you wanted to select a font and you don't remember how the font looks like, you have to select each of them. Write some random text in, the for, in Word, let's say. Highlight all of these and change the fonts until you find one that you like. And then you have to remember, okay, this is so, sort of nice. Let's remember, write down the name somewhere and then I can continue and then you need to go back and remember which was the font that you like it. So this is usually helpful. I see immediate, it's a very small change for for a developer, for a designer, just to enable the preview of the font before using it. So that it's allow people to not to waste a lot of time for selecting that. And it's also a scrollable list so that the portion of the page is just limited, even if you have 1,000 fonts installed on your computer. So this is, again, a grouping, menu grouping example with other positive uh, things that, um, that you have. And, uh, well, without going into the detail and information sent, um, the, the main idea is that web page and user interface in general provides cues to suggest where information are. And these cues could be colors, coding, could be icons, could be menu, could be breadcrumbs. And according to the elements we have on the screen, we can sort of understand where we are in terms of which page we are. Maybe it's a form and we are step number three or five and what to do next. And so if, if this is poor, we don't know where to go, we don't know how to go back and we are not sure of our action because we don't know how to proceed. We are worried to maybe break something or that operation are not saved correctly. Uh, and so this is another example uh, of a poor information sent. Uh, do you remember this, right? Because you were not so old, so young. Um, so this is a very bad example of information sent, not this page alone, but what happens when you click on one of these square. Because when you click on one of the square, you go on pages that are each one totally different from the other. And so this is a poor way of transferring information because in one page you have squares with colors and white text. And then in, if you click on the first one, you go in a page which has these different colored uh, block, blocks. If you click on the second one, you have a totally different page with a totally different layout, with a totally different color coding. If you go in the third one, you have something that is similar to the first one, but not identical, because here all is organized 
precisely and all the rectangles are the same. In the first one, we have bigger and smaller rectangles uh, instead. In this fourth one, there is similar, but with totally different colors, totally a different palette of colors. And here we have something that is more similar to the first page. So again, we, we found some familiarity. And then if we click also these other are similar, but here we have this totally different layout in which we have two columns at the beginning and the three columns and then other colors because everything is blue. And here there is a menu on the left and here there is no menu. Actually, the menu is hidden and you have by default, you have to open it. So all pages are a different word or its own. So this is very bad from a navigation and reading perspective because every page is a rediscover of what happens. And this is clearly, was clearly done because the website evolved over time and over time they didn't rebuild everything from scratch and just rebuild the section that was added or updated. And they solved this by redoing the entire website. Now the website is more coherent and consistent, even if it has its own other set of issues from a visual design perspective, but at least this is sort of solved until you click on something that brings back here, for instance, because this page is still, is still there. Others are, are not, but this page is still there. Or the course page are still there. So there are this old part available together with the new part, and so there is still this disconnect. But this is something to avoid. If you have follow a structure in your website and your application, that follow that. It's not that at a certain point the page change layout like in this case. Um, so the commons problem in are uh, some categories that are unexpected links that are short and the navigation that is hidden or icon that are not very, very specific, maybe too generic or not easily uh, recognizable in general. Uh, icon is actually good, as I was saying yesterday, uh, icon plus text wins always between just icon or just text. And Word is a good example of that, or the Office Suite is a good example for that. Uh, also because redundant coding between things help recognition. So the icon with Format Painter would help you every time you see this icon to remember that this is Format Painter, even if there is no text anymore associated with that. And that is this highlighter and this change the color of the font because you have learned that through usage. Uh, icon plus text and then becomes just an icon when you are more expert or the same icon is used on multiple places. Uh, when you use a link, you should always use multi-words link. So like the first example, download the next assignment template and not like the second one, let's say assignment template, click here. So the link is meaningful in the first case because it's telling you what there is behind the link, the next assignment template. Instead, behind this here, there could be anything because you, you cannot know. And also use a straight language no jargon in any case, or scoromatic download probably doesn't mean anything, but download the spreadsheet for computing score is way more understandable. And also it's a multi-word link with respect to scoromatic. So this is something to remember for links. And if you pick one links in our website, this is not done like this, tell me that we need to fix it. Um, uh, similar, Forms, uh, forms are split in logical field grouping. We have seen the one of Amazon sort of already uh, with titles and there will be real-time checking of error and validation feedback. So here there is a warning because the email is not a valid email and the password instead is good according to that. And there is an explicit submit button that is visible and it's a primary button which is way different from the secondary option that is cancel instead. And well, there is a lot of form elements and UI elements and these are probably familiar for, for many of you. And just to conclude five minutes, um, I said to, to you yesterday this sentence, how people read, they don't. Um, and it's actually, you can, you can read or not about the reason. 
about this. And so how they discover, they discover using a software that's called Eye Tracker that will allow you to see where people are looking in a page and create maps like this. Mm -hmm. So this is a night tracker applied to a web page where the red areas are the one that the person looks more. Mm -hmm. And so you can see, for instance, in this case, that there are areas in this page that are totally not looked at. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people looked here, a lot of people looked here, but nobody, for instance, looked in these spaces here. Well, first, this is, this is white, so maybe there is a reason, but here there is text. And also, with the same mechanism, uh, they looked how a website, in this case, a shopping for shoes, was looked at. So many, many people look at the logos of the website, and some people look at the picture, and this link here, but basically nobody look at the navigation, the lateral navigation menu, in this experiment. So eye tracker are devices like this, in various format, and as infrared camera that get the pupil of your uh, eyes and get, can understand where you're looking on a screen. And this can be used to, well, understand where you're looking also as a way to input from the computer. So if you look in some place for a while, then it will be like clicking the button that is located in that place. And these are also quite expensive uh, devices that could be or with a screen included or just like this to be put behind uh, on the bottom of a screen or there is also portable like glasses if you want to not use it for user interface but you want to navigate a supermarket and see which products people look most or where people look most at the top of the shelf on the bottom of the shelf some uh, areas more than others so these are, but the mechanism is the same. There is an infrared camera to get where you're looking at. And, and you can create this kind of visualization to understand where um, people are looking. And in that experiment with the long text, they discovered that uh, people doesn't uh, look, doesn't read, just scan the page and then look on some specific. So that's why the text hierarchy we have discussed yesterday, fewer text highlighted is helping because it's a, a is getting the attention of the person that is actually is looking at the information you want to highlight. Because if you have a wall of text, then nobody is going to read the entire wall of text. If you select some specific word, then the attention is there, and they will look at the, um, at the selection. And, and the A-Tracker could also be used on the opposite. Once you know how people look on the web page, you can try to optimize for putting information on the areas that are mostly look at. So this is a Google search and most people look at the beginning of the page and then basically here is looked by nobody and then you look at the bottom. Why you look at the bottom? Why do you look at the bottom of the page on a Google search page? Because you need to go to the next page. So people, but they skip totally the last results of the page before going to the next one. And this is a similar experiment in Wikipedia where, again, people look at the top location of the page. And this is another example with advertisement. So basically, nobody look at the rebook. They just look at the picture. Again, foreground image. Uh, nobody look at the, the product here that is just in, the, in this corner. They look at the main things, uh, in this case, people in the in the front, central, as a focal point of attention. And so what happens is that you design something like this and people are very focal looking what they need. So if a person wants to buy a ticket, they will look for something that say buy or purchase or ticket and then will just totally ignore everything else, even if it's fundamental um, answer. So, you have to, to design not thinking that people will carefully read everything, but just they will scan and will get the information that they want and that they get. And here there is a, an experiment and you can use it for refining your text if you want of a promotional text for some from Nebraska and their things to, to be seen. And this started from this baseline task that described Nebraska and the historical parks and the museum and the monuments, etc. And 
when they had an objective language with a scannable layout, so bullet point, and a text that is concise, together they get a usability improvement of 124% with respect to the baseline. That is way more than the combined version, the, the individual version of the others. But so if you have a text that is schematic, as, as we said yesterday, hierarchy, white space, uh, not a lot of words, and it's highlighting the elements that you want to highlight, then the improvements in usability and readability in errors that people don't do usually improve as well. And you, you can, if you want, you can read the details and see the, the difference between the various options. So if you want to put content, the best location are above the fold. That means above the fold is the page. So if you are a, a desktop computer, above the fold is actually the screen, the first screen, the portion of the page that appear in the screen before scrolling, because this is where people look, where people expect, and also where other pages put the similar content. Uh, and user will scroll down only or mostly if the first content is interesting. If you catch the attention at the beginning, then people will continue to use the website or the application. Otherwise, they will probably close it and move on. And in the locations where you find advertisement is typically find advertisement is a very bad idea to put any significant content because apparently people learned that advertisement is on the top 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 or on the left uh, on the right of the web page and so they selectively just ignore that page that parts and that's why we have banners that appears everywhere in a web page now because we we developed a, a banner blindness we just know that some locations are, are not so interesting in content across several websites and we just avoid to look them at all. Mm? So here there is three examples. Mm? So never create a message that might look like an advertisement and never put it where typically an advertisement is, especially on a web page. And that's it for today and for um, the visual design. We will meet uh, tomorrow in the lab when there is the second and last part of the assignment two, and then we will proceed with assignment three, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Uh, next week the classes will be made by Alberto, not by me. So we will have a change speaker, and he will talk about. We talk with you about uh, the heuristic evaluation. That is the next step, and we also do an exercise on heuristic evaluation. That is the next step also in the assignment. Uh, I'm still here for a few minutes uh, if you have any question, otherwise have a nice night.